The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Oh, man. What to do, what to do, what to do. What can I build? What can I work with? You know, I'm just kind of on this, like, retro computing vibe right now. Kind of, I can totally dig into some retro computing right now. Let's see what I got. Oh, let's see. Retro, 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 retro. No, not quite. What about you? Hmm. Nah. Oh, I'm going to need some inspiration on this one. Spock, I'm asking. Well, speak to me, Shannon. A thing of that nature, Captain. Then, since we're headed for Altair 6, since we're headed for Altair 6, Altair 6, Altair 6, for Altair 6. That's it! Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Matthew, and today I am ridiculously excited because we are going to build one of the most influential platforms in all of computing history. We are going to build the Altair 8800. So the story behind the Altair is actually kind of cool because it was a it was one of the very early microcomputers, probably one of the like the first popular microcomputers. You know, the only other computers that people really had access to were these big honking humongous monstrosities made by IBM that cost $10 billion and they fit in like a humongous room and you couldn't take them home and you couldn't tinker with them and you had to pay for the time to access them. It was just ridiculous. So MITS uh, came out with this kit that you could buy for a few hundred bucks, take it home, put it together and you had your little computer. And the thing was a hit. They had it in Popular Electronics Magazine and it was flying off the shelves and this guy named Paul Allen was like, this thing's really freaking cool. So he goes to his buddy Bill and he says, dude, we should just quit this whole college deal and go write software for a living. So they did. They quit MIT, moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, started a little company you might have heard of called Microsoft. And it was all built around this Altair 8800 computer. The very first Microsoft product was a basic interpreter for the Altair. We're gonna build something a little bit smaller, a little more uh, manageable. Uh, David Hansel has written a simulator that runs on an Arduino Due and pretty much uh, uh, completely replicates all of the functionality of the original Altair and then some. So you've got some, uh, you got some nice modern touches, like software shortcuts and things like that, that that weren't available on the original. So we're gonna take David's software and we're going to build the electronics around that. So we're gonna start with the Arduino. We're gonna build out from there with all the toggle switches and all the LEDs and all the drivers and all the good stuff from there and build the case. And we're gonna get this thing as close to the aesthetic of the original Altair as possible. So I wanna build a little bit of an homage to uh, this uh, classic computer system. So really, I just want to design a nice, uh, appropriate case for it. I've got an image here of an original Altair that I'm kind of basing this off of. So there's, it's a two-tone case, so you've got this blue outer section and then you have like the the cream colored like lid and section that kind of so i need to kind of design around this front panel frame here and then this bottom section that's all the same color material so i'm thinking what i'm going to do is essentially have this basic idea like that kind of this box that uh, fits around here and then the three pieces for that and then it'll screw on to the bottom on four sides and 
that's probably how we're going to do it. I'm only going to make the thing about, uh, about six inches deep. So really, it's probably going to end up being something more like that from the side. And then the top part right over the top like that. So maybe a one by one by 15. So this is same top front, which is the bottom panel period. For the sides, maybe halfway up, so three inches, go from the center straight down to that intersection right there. Go, that's the corner. The height is at three inches. I wanna take the height down to two inches right there. And so this becomes our side piece. So this is all going to be in blue acrylic, so it will match. It will match this sort of outside piece. So this back panel is going to be 14.75 wide. It should fit underneath this blue part right here, and that's the top. Now I need the sides, and then I got to put these vent holes in. Um, and I'm going to use a rounded rectangle tool for that. There's these little eighth-inch vents that start at the center. They're going to be evenly spaced, so I'm going to just rack them up like this and then just duplicate a whole bunch of them and then go through and delete every other one. And now we're going to have a nice evenly spaced uh, ventilation grill. And this will all fit inside the blue part uh, very nicely. Okay, that's our basic design. That's our, our front panel and our side panels and our, our bottom. That'll all be one blue piece. And then this is the top and the interior sides that and then it'll screw into the blue pieces. So that's how that's gonna work. So you have all the lights across the front. Each of those lights corresponds to a single bit or an address. On the original Altair, were driven by the CPU. Now on our little simulator, uh, we're going to drive them with uh, the IO pins on the Arduino. So in order to do that, we need to build a little driver circuit for each of the LEDs. It's a very simple circuit, really. So we have our LED, and then coming in from one side of the LED, we get a constant 5 volt from the 5 volt rail on the Arduino. And then the other side, the other leg of the LED, we're going to attach to a transistor. And just a, like a 2N, 2N, 2222, probably work best. Here is the collector. We have the base and emitter side. The emitter side is going to be uh, connected to ground. So this will normally be open. And then when the, we'll get a signal from the Arduino, that will actually close our circuit. That'll turn on the transistor and this will close the circuit, and the LED will light. We'll use the internal pull-down resistors in the Arduino to keep this low, keep it pulled low so that nothing gets through here. And then, of course, when it, uh, when it triggers high, it'll close the circuit. So in implementation, we have our signal wire here. This will be connected to the Arduino. We have our 5 volt, and we have our ground as such. So we need to solder all this together. Oh my gosh, there's so many. This is like with 36, 36 some odd LEDs, 12 solder joints. Uh, oh gosh, this is going to take a while. Let's cue that montage. And through the miracle of television, we have our 36 uh, LED circuits all wired together with their appropriate signal wires in this bunched up rat's nest of wiring right now. So 
Uh, now what I need to do is install this onto the front plate along with the switches and uh, get this all put together and clean up this wiring a little bit and then we'll get this all installed onto the Arduino. Uh, everything all plugged in effectively there and this thing should be coming together pretty quickly now. One of the more silly retro computers with just big chunky toggle switches on them. Maybe I can make a keyboard that's all toggle switches. Ooh, that would be terrible. Okay, so now that I have all of the uh, switches, all the data switches, wired up. Now I got to put in these little momentary switches for the function switches. These these will go in down here uh, so like you know run, stop, examine, examine, next, deposit, reset, clear, protect, etc, etc, etc. So these are um, these are again SPDT but they're momentaries. So they're center off and then momentary on to either side. They'll go in here and the center will be connected to ground and each of the uh, momentary ons will go to a digital pin on the Arduino. So the firmware for our Altair simulation is here on GitHub. This is uh, this is the author's GitHub page, David Hansel's GitHub page. These are all the files that uh, are going into this whole thing, and I'm not going to go through all of them together, uh, but I will run through the main uh, Arduino code uh, just to kind of give you an idea of how it works. We're just going to download it. Okay. So there's our code. A couple of things we got to do because I want to test this with the serial monitor first. And what I need to do is I need to change it because this is where you like toggle on or off different peripherals. And what I need to do is actually I need to literally toggle off the front panel because I'm not it's not hooked up. So I'm not using it yet. So I'm, I'm just running a simulation from the Arduino with uh, serial output. And that is that. So let's get this thing, check it out. Let's make sure it works. Uh, let's get the serial monitor up and running. Uh, 75200. Sweet! Look at that. It's like a little virtual uh, front panel. That's awesome. Now I need to put the, uh, the front panel, I need to finish that and get that plugged into the Arduino. And I think we're gonna have ourselves a computer. So everything is wired. Everything is in there. Now, so our moment of truth. Okay, let's try and load basic. One zero one, and this one's down. Sweet! <laughs> yes! <laughs> it worked. Oh my god, I made something that actually works. <laughs> oh man. Yes, it's running basic. 
Oh my gosh. That's fantastic. So this is it. This is state-of-the-art in home computing circa 1975. And now we can put the Altair 8800 on a board that's this big. That's rad. Anyway, what you would do to load a program, you would actually have to physically manipulate all these switches. You would have to physically manipulate the data by flipping switches, uh, inputting certain bytes into certain addresses, and as soon as the program was entered, then you could actually, um, then you could, you know, tap the run uh, function and it would run that program. Uh, you know what, actually we need to start off uh, with our, uh, so this is kind of in a random state from, uh, from just booting up, right? Um, so we're gonna stop whatever it's doing and reset. Clears everything, clears all the addresses. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip uh, one bit, we're going to flip this one bit, and we're going to use that, and we're going to signal with the aux switch that we want to play kill the bit. So it was already loaded into memory, all I had to do was my little uh, shortcut there, and here we go. So this is kill the bit. This is home gaming. This is home video console gaming in 1975, Pong era, except that Pong was only available in the arcades at this time. So if you wanted to play something at home, you had to like you manipulate, you had to actually load it into a computer and it took you like 20 minutes to do it. And then once you were there, then you could, you know, play a game for a little while. Anyway, so this is Kill the Bit. This is probably one of the more famous games for the Altair. It runs entirely on the front panel. And what you do is you have to, uh, you see this, uh, this series of blinking lights. And what you had to do is you had to like toggle the switch really quick to turn off the light uh, to kill the bit. And if you missed it, then uh, you know another one would pop up in its place and the whole thing would light up eventually and then it would be game over. It kind of reminds me of those old Mattel handheld football games from, from back in the, uh, you know, back in my day, we had LEDs. So that's the Altair. And the cool thing is like any good PC, this is expandable. This is just the base model. This is just the platform. And we can build off of that. We can build a serial terminal. We can build a, um, there is a raster graphics card available for this. It plugs into the serial port and gives you raster graphics out. So you can play Space War and Pong and all those titles. You've got 80 column adapter cards that allow you to play more uh, robust and advanced text games like Star Trek. There's even a sound card for this thing. It allows you to play music off of it. There's a lot that can be done and I'm gonna be working with this thing a lot more in the future. So follow me at element14.com and you'll be able to see when all that stuff comes out. In the meantime, what kind of retro computing platforms have you worked with? Let us know in the comments at element14.com forward slash presents. You can also find out news, information, upcoming events, and so much more. My name is Matthew, and until next time, tally ho, y'all.